Okay, I've been working on the seat pan for the Z50. And your seat cover is held on by these little triangular tabs here. They're just poked through the sheet metal and then they poke out this way. And when the, let me show you. On, in order to get your old seat cover off, you have to take a screwdriver and gently bend these up. And the seat cover just kind of, oops, seat cover just kind of goes through there. And then you press them down and they hold the seat cover in place when you put your new one on there. So that for the old one, again, you pry all these up, be careful, they're sharp, and then just pull the seat cover off. And I'm painting the pan and I'm just working on the seat foam. Now, yeah, I could go buy out and buy another seat foam. <laughs> But what's the point? I can fix this one. It's just got a little chunk out of the back. So I've glued some upholstery foam onto here with double-sided, uh, double-sided, sorry. Uh, Spray-on contact cement. This is the stuff you use on uh, automotive upholstery, door panels, headliners, that kind of stuff. Spray both sides, wait a few minutes for it to tack up, stick it on, and then start sanding it down. Uh, with a grinder, just a grinder with a sanding wheel. Um, just got to be very careful, and you can actually form that really well. And I'm just going to put this on uh, time lapse, and you can see. Okay, so you can see how this is slowly coming along. And this is the same method I use for making all custom motorcycle seats. I used, I like to keep the original foam because it's nice and dense and thick and it's hard to buy that stuff. I made this seat with the exact same thing. This was an original Honda Goldwing uh, two-man hump seat that came out to like here. And I just formed it in the exact same way. And once upholstered, it's, uh, it's perfect. So I'm just going to finish carving this to shape. I'm using a grinder with a flapper disc on it, a flap style sanding disc. And I don't use new ones. If you use a new one, it really grabs. So I use an old one that's been not really good for metal anymore. For metal prep, I just save them and I can use it on this stuff and it doesn't too aggressively grab it. One spot there you might have seen where this grabbed and it does, it can grab if you push too hard into it. Anyway, I'm hoping you get the gist of that. And see, though, I, again, I like to keep the original foam because it, it also shows me the shape I'm doing. Um, yeah, you can buy another one for 50 or 60 bucks online, but, uh, you know, with shipping and blah, 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 everything else, why fix it yourself? I mean, I just enjoy fixing stuff myself and not throwing it in the garbage in the landfill. It's been around for 50 years. It might as well continue around. So I'll show you this once I'm done and we'll go to cover the seat. Okay, so now looking at this seat, it might look like it's, you know, lumpy and there's some chunks of foam sticking out. And remember, this isn't original motorcycle seat foam. This is way more compressible than the original stuff. This is, you can't get this stuff anymore. So this is going to compress down a little bit more than this will when we wrap the seat, the new seat cover on. And the last thing you'll use before you put the seat cover on is what I like to call the bondo of, or the body filler of upholstery. And it's this thin woven, I don't even know if it's made of, God knows, rayon, nylon, I don't know. It's probably the stuff they jam into. It's got a little bit of fiberglass hairs on it because it was stored with my fiberglass cloth. And it will simply 
double-sided glue again, like the, the contact cement on both sides. And then you simply wrap it on and wrap it around. And it's very thin and airy, airy, but it takes care of the bumps or lumps between the upholstery and kind of fills in all of the irregularities. So you'll do that once you put the uh, foam back on the pan. So I'm actually going to spray some double-sided adhesive on uh, the underside of the foam here and on the top side of my pan. Put two, two together and then we'll finish up wrapping this. Okay, so now the foam's glued to the pan. I can find spots where I need to fill in some more with some thin slices of foam. And you can just slice these, I'll show you. It comes about this thickness. That's about as thick as it is, about an inch from the upholstery shop or fabric shop. And then you can just slice it nice and thin. And again, this stuff compresses really, really well. So I can build up the side of the pan and glue those on there. And then once that final fabric covering, I'm gonna find out what that stuff's called. I think it's called roving for some reason or bunting. I don't know, I'll find out. Um, anyway, once that stuff's on there, um, it'll cover up all the imperfections and make it nice and smooth and round. And uh, This side, there's a little bit of imperfections to go. And there's one thing, very important, save this plastic. It's like a um, an edge cover for the metal. When you take your old seat cover off, this will be on there and it wraps around. And it just wraps over the metal lip and keeps the upholstery from digging into the metal lip. I'm going to touch all this up, get some fill-ins there where I need them. Oops, this tucked under. Not that it matters much. I'm going to get some infill stuff there where I need it, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, I've got most of the trim pieces, the fill-in pieces I need stuck on, and I'm going to put it on time-lapse, because it usually takes a few minutes. This little corner bead is very finicky. So I'll put it on time-lapse and uh, tuck that all in and on to the edges of the uh, seat pan. This one's pretty easy to see where it starts at because you can see the front hump there and then where it meets, kind of, see that? Okay, so here's that rubber strip because it shrinks over the years. It doesn't quite meet on the edge. So we'll put a little bit of extra of that, um, what I'm calling roving that white stuff over here to protect this lip, or I can put some silicon on here. And you see how it's rounded and it just protects the, when the vinyl wraps over, the vinyl seat cover wraps over, it's not going to be encountering a sharp piece of metal there, which will eventually easily slice it in half okay so now i'm just going to get set i think that needs to be a little flat now that'll be fine i'm going to put my upholstery bondo on and i'm just going to drape it over um yeah i'm also put it on on time lapse because it's you know takes a few minutes to do and Nobody wants to watch all that in real time. Oh, by the way, this plastic trim, there's a longer side, which goes to the outside, and a shorter side, which goes to the inside. So it's like in a C, well, it's kind of a J shape like this. And this part of the J goes to the inside. Foam has the longer lip on it. Okay, back in a bit.
Okay, because I didn't have any really big pieces of this left. Hey, COVID, I can't go to freaking upholstery stores and pick up stuff. Um, so there's my initial wrap done. And now again, I'll put it on time lapse. Oops, did that come off? Oh no, that's just that. I thought this had come off of, I thought that was the metal edge. But uh, this foam shrinks over time as well. So I'm gonna wrap this. Finish wrapping, I'm just gonna use little fill-in pieces. And uh, we'll finish this up again. I'll put this back on time lapse not to bore you with ridiculous amounts of time to watch. Okay, so you can see this stuff's almost like cotton candy and you can bend it and twist it to any way, obviously, that you want and you can just pull pieces off with your fingers and pull little chunks out and tuck them in in places. It does not have to be perfect around the edges. The seat cover is going to cover it and wrap it up and make it all nice and smooth. And these pieces, once I had the initial piece on, I just spray glued it and then put this in a little section and then bent it around and wrapped it in some pretty neat stuff and any voids you get like this you can just take a little piece pull it off put a little bit of glue on there jam a little piece in it's not going to create a lump it's kind of like working with play-doh um, a fabric play-doh. I got my little spot here. I'm going to jam some in and uh, we'll be back once this is dry and uh, it takes about 15 minutes. I just don't want any tackiness on it um, to put the new seat cover on. Back in a bit. Okay, here's my new seat cover I ordered off of eBay. It's got the original Honda little Z on it. Honda on the back. Let's hope it fits. I'm going to kind of turn it inside out. side we should do first. Yeah, I'm going to do the back. Wrap the back around first. Place it on top. There's no glue here. This does not need glue, this part. And push it to the front. And slowly unwrap it over top of the seat. Ooh, we might actually fit. This will be nice if it does. <laughs> I, not that I didn't expect it to fit, but you never know. Okay. Flip her over. And to make sure it's even, I'm trying to get this seam kind of sitting on top of the edge here, all the way around. Okay, so we'll start with the back. And how are you going to watch this? Let's put this, should I get this tripod higher? Go higher? No, you don't. One sec. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. So we're going to start with the middle prongs. And we're going to wrap over and in between the seams. Because we want this seam, again, we want this seam on top here so that it's even all the way along, so that this seam ends up as the seam for the bottom of the seat, like that, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna tuck it in. Do I want that tucked in or not? Um, good question. 
kind of extra protection. Hmm. No, I want to, I want this rubber edge in between, I believe. I don't want it in between there. Should I? It's gonna be a pain to do that all the way along, but sticking it in between these two flaps of the French seam might be the best way to make it line up all the way around. Look at my original. And no, it didn't really go in between. Original just flopped over. Okay. So I'll just set this up so the seam is lined up with the top of the lip there. And I'm going to roll over and push a little triangle through, a little tab through. Now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do the, these two first, or these three first on the back. Make sure it's straight. Stretch it a little bit. Pop it through. Now this one, same thing, keeping the line straight. Pop it through. I've got a nice seam back there. I'm not going to press these down yet. I'm going to swap over to the front. Can you see that? Let me look and see. You should be able to see that. Right there, that little tip. Let's bring this closer. Try and line up, tuck under there, the seam along the edge, and then pull it forward and pop it. I think I should have pulled it forward a tiny bit more. There we go. And then I'll do, again, I'm trying to keep this seam even all the way around. So I'll do these two fronts. And then this one. Under. start in the middle on the sides. Let me do it this way so you can see better. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Let me look. <laughs> Good. Yes, you can. And line up the seam so it's right at the edge. I'm going to do this one. Here. And here. Okay, and that edge is nice and straight along there, and we're going to do the same on the opposite side. Try and save the corners for the end. Now this one's going to be tough because it's got two layers to go through. Because these two layers of fabric meet here. So I'm going to pull this out up a little bit so it's a little bit sharper toward me.
stay poking through there. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? Like I said, the last one, I'm gonna be trying to pull this, the corners so that they're nice and flush and get those done. And then once that's done, I'm going to push down. I can think I can do these now without any worry. Push down the little fingers and they will hold the upholstery from coming back up. Okay. All right, be back when I'm all done. Okay, seat cover done. And with the seam here, you just kind of roll it into place and roll it into position. Good as new. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're gonna redo the steering head bearings now that uh, I've got the frame painted and the front frame forks painted, um, or the top forks painted. And this is kind of a bitch because it's individual bearings and not tapered bearings. You can buy the tapered bearing kit and then go throw it in, but I'm gonna use the original. So here's all the parts that came off originally that I missed filming. Excuse my whatever. So you've got a bottom washer, a dust seal, then there will be the bottom, which is this one. There's two of these bearing tops. See the larger one that's on the bottom? And the bearings will go on top of that. There should be 21 per race. And then we'll do the top side. So I'm going to drop the bottom bearing on, or the bottom washer. Okay, helicopter, back in one second. Apologize for that. There's a uh, really, really high-end resort down the street. Um, and people show up by helicopter. Um, anyway, so we've put the bottom uh, washer on. And now we've got the rubber dust seal that's going to drop on. And that seals the inner tube. Oops. That seals the inner fork tube, main fork neck. I'm getting dusting. Now we're going to take the larger of the two races, and this has got a rounded, like flying saucer shaped side, and then a flat side. Flying saucer shaped side is going to go up. And it should sit in the this dust seal. Will oh wait a minute, why is that not going down? Hmm. Back to one sec. Okay, back again. My paint had gotten ever so slightly too thick down here when I painted uh, the front end. So, again, big washer. There's two of them. This is on the, for, on the top, this one. I don't need that until later. The little one won't fit around all the way anyway. I've got the rubber dust seal. And now we've got the big bearing race again with the rounded scooped up side. push straight down and center within the seal. Now the fun part. I love these little solo cups you get at the dollar store. They're like for jello shooters and stuff or whatever. Um, good for putting grease in for mixing paint or whatever and then you just throw them away. Got my little ball bearings in there. You're gonna want a lot of grease. these bearings, that's what's going to be holding these bearings on while you work this onto the frame. Maybe some more there. That's why you wait like a week after painting stuff. Because the grease is then not going to affect the paint. And then we're going to take 21, I believe it's 21. I might be wrong. 
I believe it's 21 and 21. The 21 bearings, and we're going to set them in that little dished out spot in the grease. And it's going to be a bit of a pain, so uh, you probably don't want to watch me do it forever. We're just going to sit them in there, 21 of them, back in a minute. Okay, there we go, 21 of the finest little bearings and least fun little bearings you'll ever see. Now, let's move this over. I have greased up the inner neck of the frame. I don't know if I should, if I should pull the frame, put the frame down on top or... Huh. Which way to go? Um, I think it will be easier if I lower the... Ah, no, you know what? These should be stuck in there pretty good. None of you little buggers come out. Hopefully you can see this. I'm just going to gently... So that none of them fall out. And in. Now, sorry, I can't reset up the camera because I can't move this. I have to hold this so it doesn't come apart. Okay. Let me move you. This is, I just put the frame on the floor so that the forks. in and now on the top we're going to fill that top full of oops fill the top full of grease like we did with the last time and then it's going to be inverted um, because the top bearing hat goes this way with the little rounded shape going down so press the bearings in that direction the bottom one pushes them in this direction so I'm going to repeat the same thing now fill that with full of grease and then yeah god i'm gonna try and stick them all to this sucker and then drop it back in back in a second ah oh, for giggles i thought you might want to watch me struggle putting these little bearings in it's not that big a deal it's just that they're they don't like to stay where they're supposed to go these ones are a little easier because they kind of have a little slot to go in line themselves up in there as you're putting them in. They don't really have anywhere else to go except for the little divot. as many on the bottom as the, or sorry, on the top as the bottom. I believe that is it. I don't think we can get any more in there. <laughs> That's only 19. So, whatever, the number is the number stick the top bearing retainer on. Go away, mosquito. And center those bearings. They do kind of have to push away a little bit. There we go. Now let's pull that off and see. I don't know. We got room. <laughs> They're just not supposed to be that tight to the stem. one more. That's 
not easy. Hold on. one more bearing in there. No, I guess there is. One more. I suppose, as far as I know, it's 21. So it does take 21 and 21. Stay in there. Okay. I'm gonna re-grease this top hat a little bit. Back in one second, I'm missing a part. Okay, I wasn't missing, it was sitting right in front of me. The top bearing hat, it's like a plastic, ooh, plastic cover that holds grease in, and then the bolt for bolting it down. And I'm gonna fill this full of grease as well. Oh, there's a chunk of old grease in there. I need more grease. Okay, so this sucker is slathered up with grease now. And this is just going to be used. We're not going to fully tighten this yet. But it's going to be used to keep the bearings retained. Hard as you can, finger tight. Well, not hard as you can, but pretty tight, finger tight. Spread the crease around. Tighten a little more. Okay. That's it for the steering bearings. The adjustment, I'll do the adjustment once we get the uh, the top on and I'm waiting for a rubber boot so we can finish the front uh, suspension. Oh, maybe I'll blast the engine in today. Um, hmm, we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much for walking, watching. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment. Uh, it really helps me out if you comment. The more comments you leave, the better. Thanks for watching. Okay, time to freshen up the engine a little bit. I've cleaned it all off, taped off the cylinder head. Um, obviously the oil, uh, the dipstick. I taped off the other side the magneto and flywheel because I've got the cover off still. And the little crankcase ventilation tube on the top. Essentially whatever you don't want painted. And I'm using, again, farm implement aluminum. I'm not going for a full best-in-class restoration here. It's just going to look better. And you don't want to tape, paint the cylinder head because of the heat. I'm just going to put a light coat on.
I've already painted the bottom so I could flip it onto the bottom and not have to worry. And this stuff, you repaint the second coat within like a minute or two, if you, as long as you're doing light coats. And for the third coat, which is gonna be slightly thicker, you do after about 10 minutes. And within an hour, you can handle this thing, pick it up, move it around. Um, if you haven't seen the last video, it's an XL. But this is just essentially farm equipment paint. If you get farm equipment and implement paint, it's all the same, just different companies making it. Um, it's just ridiculously durable for this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, I'll finish this up and unwrap this uh, once it's dry in about an hour and we'll do a couple more things if we have time to tonight. Quick note on the steering head bearing, uh, re-tightening it for tightening it for the final um, tightening. You can, if you've got a steering head wrench, I have one, but if you don't, you can just use a pair of pliers or uh, channel locks and grab this and tighten it by hand little by little, and what you kind of want to end up with is when you're holding the frame straight up and down, it will stay <laughs> when you're straight up and down, and when you turn a bit to the side, it will turn. If it will not fall on its own, it's too tight. And this one could probably tighten the tiniest little bit more. And then once that's on, you can put the final cap on the top, the little uh, triangular shaped piece that goes atop, on top of the, uh, the fork tubes and the steering bearing. And then there's a nut on top of that, um, which I'm not sure the torque on, but I will find out and uh, we'll put that on. But I'm not gonna torque it down until I get the rest of the fork tubes finished off, the shock absorber parts. I won't be torquing down the center until that's done, but I'm gonna put the final nut on just so that it's on there. Now, actually, you know what, I'll just do it now. I've got it sitting over here. Washer, nut. Just so that I don't lose it, I know where it is. I'm just going to hand tighten this. Until I've got the rest of the shocks done because they pop up through the two ends and bolt on top. Anyway, uh, we're getting there. Progress is making it. Engine's done being painted. I put a little bit of red. I always do that on the Hondas, on the lettering. Uh, just a little paintbrush and dip it into the recessed Honda lettering and then wipe it off with a little bit of um, mineral spirits and wipe it down and I've just got to polish it off a little bit because there's a see there's a little bit of marks I'm just going to use some uh, thousand grit sandpaper and that will polish down and that uh, will look fine same as the every like I said every Honda emblem for some reason I make them all red I don't know why I just do um, not something you have to do obviously it's just something I do um, yeah, I think we're going to have time to do a valve adjustment on this, so hold on and back in a minute. Okay, yeah, we're going to begin by removing the two. The intake, which is beside the carburetor, the exhaust, beside the exhaust. The 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caps to cover up the valve adjusters. And I'm also going to take a 10 millimeter and remove the three caps on me cylinder head cover and we're going to take a look at the timing chain in there and make sure everything's okay and there's no chunks or animals in there okay so we are going to adjust the valves we've removed the bolts from the valve cover valve cover well it kind of is the valve cover it's the top engine cover the valves are under these caps here and then you tap it with a plastic hammer or wooden hammer or something that's not a metal hammer and slide the cover off and we're just going to look and see if there's any crud in there, which there isn't. There's nothing nasty going on in there. On a 35, 40-year-old engine, you never know. So the valves, this is again the intake valve. The exhaust valve is on the bottom. They're the exact same, exact same measurement. You're going to need a 0 0.05 millimeter or 0 0.002 inch Oh, I 
God. What the heck, I just... Oh, this is a, they're called feeler gauges. Sorry, my brain just farted for a second because one of my feeler gauges folded up. These things are like paper. 0 0.005 is very thin. Um, anyway, so this is your, uh, you have to take off the side of the, uh, the crankshaft side with the magneto under it, and you're going to turn it this way. There's an arrow on there that tells you which way you should only turn it and watch this top valve. That's the intake valve because you're going to be adjusting on the compression stroke. So when the intake valve starts moving in, that is when we're suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So suck. When this is opening up, that's suck. And then it comes back to the top. That is squeezing and squishing. So the piston's coming back up and that's the compression stroke that we want. And then we're gonna mark up the little notch line up the little notch that's on the top here um, right there there's a little notch on the crankcase with the T as it comes up continuing to turn in the same direction where is a Z T there'll be an F and then a T F and T and then we're gonna come back here let me light this up so you can see. Can you see the T on the top lined up with the little notch in the case? And there's a T also written there. You follow it all the way up. Come on, camera, sit still. There we go. And hopefully, when you grab your valve adjuster, your rocker arm, they will both be slightly loose. Now the adjustment you're going to make is down. Let me get something to point with. The adjustment is down underneath between the top of the valve. There's a little round nub on top of the valve and there's also a little round nub the screw that goes in between the valve and there should be clearance in between there. So you're going to take your feeler gauge and you're going to gently find a little gap between the two and hopefully there is one or else they're too tight. Oops. And then, oh, there we got it in there and wiggle it back and forth and there should be just slight resistance on it. It shouldn't go too freely and it shouldn't catch. It shouldn't be grabbing. Just slight resistance like that. Kind of if you can hear it, and you're good. And that's the same for the bottom, so let's go down and do the bottom on the exhaust pipe. Should be exact same clearance. You know what's easier? Since I have the engine out, I can flip it for you. if it'll stay there and the exhaust valve is the exact same hopefully that one's the tiniest bit loose so I'm gonna have to get a 10 millimeter wrench and oh that's just kind of a little thingy to hold a little nub to hold there's usually a flathead screw that you turn to adjust but this is gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench and a little wrench to hold the center back in one sec. I lied. This is not a 10 millimeter. This is one of those evil genius um, weirdo in between nine millimeters. The not often seen nine millimeter size. So you're going to gently loosen it. Oops, it's not getting in your way, hopefully. without turning the engine over <laughs> and dropping it off this little table. So generally, let's see if it does. The little center part will spin with it. And it does not, which is good. Okay, the little center, I'm going to, I need to tighten this the slightest bit and I'm going to use a pair of vice grips so I can just generally lock onto that. I'm going to turn it 
ever so slightly tighter. And then hold with the vice grip so this doesn't tighten with it. It's like a five foot pound. You don't want to overdo it. And we're going to measure again. Still a little bit tight. I put a little bit of pressure with my finger, with my thumb, and it kind of held. Just gonna loosen this again. This is the exact same procedure you'd use on the top if you were on the intake valve, if you had to tighten it or loosen it. Check again. Still loose. Wow, that's really loose. Sorry, that's kind of there we go. Tiniest bit more. Okay, perfect. And that is all. Valves adjusted. Once you've done it, just spin the engine again, counterclockwise a few times, making sure everything's still in place and not doing anything weird. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I think that's the end of it for today. If I do anything else, I'll let you know. But uh, that's been three, four hours working on this bike today, so. I do have other stuff to do. Thank you very much for watching. See, once I touched it with the screwdriver, it just fell out. And that's the carbs drive. And that's attached to the throttle cable. So. I've cleaned up all my hardware, but I have not polished it to show quality finish because I am not insane. Not yet, anyway. I'm on the way. Working on it. this set to eight foot pounds so that's not a real impact smack uh let me see if i can find my throttle cable and we'll attach that while we're here okay so we're going to put the new the throttle cable on the new throttle slider they are on my parts okay i'm gonna take the top cap feed the cable in through first that should jam into this little rubber. There we go. Let's see in there. That is a... Oh, how did you get on there? A washer for inside the cap. Sit flat down the bottom and the spring cable merely goes down in this little hole Ew. 
see the little spring down in the middle? Can you see that? It holds everything. That's got to be moved kind of to the side. So it traps this cable. Move, spring, move. holding down the oh, it's an adjustable needle seat too so we're gonna have to go do some adjustments in there I'll slide this in have to pull the cable tighter now from the other end okay I'll kind of pull up tight on it there's a, a groove on the side, inside the carb. A little nub there where the where this slot goes. Basically, just turn it around gently until you find it, and it'll lock into it. That is it. Down, turn, ah. and the finger tight and not to crank it on. Check the end and make sure this is working. All good. Okay, question How are we going to do any more on this tonight? Um, oh, no, not tonight. I might put the engine in, eh, well, should I put the engine in the bike? <sighs> I got time. Should I put the engine in the frame? That means I have to clean all those frame bolts and get them all polished up and ready to go. Do I want to do that? Let's take a look at what I got to do and <laughs> I'll see if I want to do that. Well, I was going to put the engine in first and then I thought, you know what, it would be better to have wheels and tires on before the engine goes in to protect, you know, so I'm not just trying to haul around the frame all the time. So, I can't do the front wheel yet because I'm still waiting on a part. But rear wheel, I can do. Slimy. Okay, we're gonna hit that brake in. Slip the chain around. And then guide this notch here into that notch. There we go. Doctor's orders. Ah, you stay in there. This is much easier when no one's watching you. Just saying. going anywhere. The adjuster goes through a little hole there. That one's 
that one. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay. You gonna stay there? Hey, suspended animation. washers for the adjuster. Lock washer. Washer, lock washer, nut. I'm not going to adjust these, obviously, because it's for chain adjustment. It's the same on the other side, but it keeps your parts from getting lost. The more you can have stuff together, the better. going on there. That is the lock washer bolt, is it not? Or the adjuster bolt. Nut. Go on there. Okay, there it goes. Chain around sprocket. You know what? Rear shocks can go on. This is funny, but um, anybody remember which side is up? <laughs> I believe the little post is down. I might be wrong. Something might be eventually a bike, uh, but I have to polish up, and I don't have new acorn nuts for those, so I don't have them. So that is where it's going to have to end for the night. I'm not putting the engine in until I have the front wheel on. Um, yeah, it's just too much of a pain in the butt moving it around. Okay, I'm done for the night for like the tenth time. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Call me an idiot if you want. That's cool. <laughs>